Hello, this is Goomzilla, and today I'm going to show you all these Mario plushes owned by me and my sister, which have appeared in our plush series from 2010 onwards. Some of them are custom made, and some of them are bought online or in stores. Now let's take a look at them in the order they appear in our videos. So first up chronologically we have Bowser's Mushroom Factory, which means... There we are, these four. So we've got our original Mario and Luigi, and... Yoshi and Toad. And now these are all gathered together because they are the same brand basically. We got all four of these in the same place and that was at a theme park called Alton Towers in the UK. They were there on a like a stall in about 2009 I think it must have been. So you paid like a couple of pounds and we got each of these. So it was pretty good value. This is what the tags say for anyone who's interested in that PMS UK. Mario and Luigi have got it a little bit more faded now. <laughs> We've been using them the most, of course. <laughs> Mario's overalls have come undone a little bit, but we've re sewn that on a couple of times. Luigi's have stuck around though. Like, so these, these aren't like the greatest Mario plushes in terms of the, the quality, but there's just something about the, the character in them that means we don't really want to change them. They just sort of have that, that right look to them. So this Yoshi we used for the design for the Yoshi tutorial and same with Toad. This Toad's head was the design for the mushroom. So yeah, that's those four. I think they're the ones who we get the most requests about where they come from out of all the plushes we have. Now this Ooh. is our original Peach plush who is used in the first five episodes we released. She's kind of weird looking which is why we got rid of her first of all. Her head is pretty huge and she kind of has this stare that's like, oh, she's coming for you. And here we have the bad guys. Cooper and Cooper. I quite like this Cooper plush. We've used him a few times. We've remade him when we did Colorado. We just gave him a little mustache and hat. And then this is our main Goomba. His original name was actually Goomzilla. Of course, that's kind of where we got the name for the channel from. So back in 2009 or maybe even eight, we used to call this guy Goomzilla. He's been sewn up once, as you can see there. In Bowser's Mushroom Factory, Cooper is the small Cooper and he becomes huge with a super mushroom. We didn't have a bigger Goomba. So what we decided to do is make this a big one. So this was the Goomba that we specifically sewed up for Bowser's Mushroom Factory. This is our, I guess, our first custom blush, therefore, right in the very first episode. Oops. The stitches are not great, and he's sort of falling apart a bit, but he's cute, so we love him. He's kind of, he's kind of the emblem of the channel, I guess. So when Cooper grabs his mushroom, he turns into this gigantic beast here. So this Cooper is huge. We've only used him in Bowser's Mushroom Factory so far. He's also kind of a different design, sort of facing forward, whereas this one stands up on two legs. Giddy up, giddy up, go, go, go. And then we have Bowser. <laughs> now, this kind of Bowser plush likes to look up at the ceiling a little bit, which maybe isn't quite ideal. These rings on his arms are a little bit flimsy as well. Now, Mario and Luigi also have their big forms here, which they turn into when they grab the super mushroom. Hello! Oh, yeah! These plushes are quite old. They're from about 2008, is my rough guess. I've noticed that the tag on this guy says 2008, I think it was. No, this one's 2007. Which one's Luigi's? 2006, but yeah, I don't know when we actually got them. <laughs> They're kind of falling apart a bit. Especially these, these overalls and the hats just... I think we've had to sew this hat on a couple of times onto poor Luigi. And Mario's one you can see is kind of... Ooh. <laughs> not really staying on right now. These overalls coming off is quite helpful for when we, in uh, Bowser and the Cooper Staff Part 2, decided to have the scene where the Cooper Staff removed his overalls and left him there naked. Oh, don't like that. And then last of all we have the mushroom. So this was, like I say, made using this toad's head. And there is a tutorial for this, just as there is for the Goomba. This was 10 years ago that this guy was made, so... In Luigi the Prankster, the second episode we released, we introduced two new ones. So here we have Wario. Ah! We actually had him before Bowser's Mushroom Factory already, but just didn't use him in that, along with a few others, but I'll come to those later. He's a little bit funny looking. He's absolutely huge. 
He's kind of about the same sort of height as Big Mario, not far off, but his face is huge. He just kind of has this really lardy, fat warrior look, I guess, to him. <laughs> which kind of suits him, so. And the other one who is in Luigi the Prankster is Boo. This is quite a nice, clean looking Boo. Uh, I love how you can sort of lose yourself in his mouth. Look at that, the gaping mouth with the tongue coming out. You can, you probably can go quite a way in there. <laughs> yeah, he's quite a nice one. The next couple of episodes were A Day in the Life of Mario and Bowser and the Cooper's Staff. And there weren't actually any new characters in those episodes. The, the videos were becoming a bit more popular around about 2012, so we started to splash out and buy some plushes yeah. just so we could have them in the series. And the first one that we got was Waluigi, so he appeared in Bowser Needs Minions in 2012. He's, he's quite cool, I love this lot of Waluigi. He's really lanky with his legs, and that's exactly how Waluigi should be. He's nice and well made. Oh, his hat seems to have come off at the back, but oh. he's doing pretty well overall. Yes. We also bought this bob -omb. He loves coming back as various different characters. Probably the most reincarnated yeah. one plush that we've got. Finally, in Bowser Needs Minions, we replaced our Peach. Nice. So this is the new Peach, and see her next to the old peach. Oh, you're disgusting. Oh no, you're disgusting. Oh. Yeah, we, we just thought this was a much needed improvement. This peach just looks a lot cleaner. I mean, her dress does sort of tend to go up a little bit like that at the top. The hair is nice. It's just, it's just nice how soft she is. Nice little crown that's not made of felt. More plasticky material. Just a much better made peach than the other one. <laughs> the next episode was Mario's Quest, and we have quite a lot of custom plushes especially made during Mario's Quest. The first one is Goomfree. He was actually made during the Goomba tutorial, which released in 2011, December. But we gave him a little bow tie, and that made him into Goomfree for Mario's Quest. Then we also made these stars. So we have the five stars that Mario has to collect as part of Mario's Quest. They've still got these um, threads on them from Mario's Quest Part 6 where they all collected together and they hovered above the generator. We just didn't take these threads off because they, they could be useful. <laughs> so we got the red star, yellow, who was made in the star tutorials. I feel like the yellow one turned out the worst out of all of them somehow. <laughs> just there's something goofy looking about the eyes, but maybe that's because I was trying to do a tutorial at the same time. Uh, and the blue one, I love that colour of blue. And here's the purple one over here. So that's all five of those. You can check out the tutorials. Probably the easiest tutorial, so if you're interested in learning how to sew, why not sew yourself a little star? And I'll put a link to that in a card, which you can see in the top corner. Another one who I made for Mario's Quest is Wacker. So Wacker has his own tutorial as well. It's quite a popular one to make for the tutorial. So he's meant to be the last of his species, so his parents, who we have here, only appear when Wacker goes there at the end of the series. His Father was made during the Wacker tutorial. Nice and plump, this guy. Good shape. And the mother was made afterwards. The child is a little bit shorter and uh, squishier, I suppose. In part four of Mario's Quest, we meet this Yoshi. You see him wearing sunglasses, partly because he kind of wanted to make a reference to Boshi from Super Mario RPG. But the other thing was, we think his eyes look a little bit weird. Uh, I space them apart a bit too much. There is a Yoshi tutorial, which you can also check out if you want to make your own Yoshi. He was made as kind of a test. I actually filmed the making of this yellow Yoshi, but in the end ended up just doing the tutorial with the blue one because I did it a slightly better way. Used some better templates, like the nose is different here to the one that's actually in the final Yoshi template. Now, a fun story about Mario's Quest Part 4 yeah. is that we knew we needed a Toadette to work on the train, but we didn't have a Toadette plush. So we ordered one online and it was actually due to arrive in about, I think it was three weeks from when we ordered it and that was too long because we were trying to get the episode out in about a two week period. So we ended up in desperation making this Toadette <laughs> so that we had one. Fun fact, the Toadette that we bought was this Toadette, who appears later on in Peach's Quest at least. And so for that tutorial I ended up making this Toad. And he doesn't even appear until Luigi's Quest, but he was made to give a tutorial alongside making this Toadette. So all those last ones were custom made for Mario's Quest, but we did also buy a few. So we have the Toad Innkeeper, who you see wearing a, a turban 
in part six. He's been reused a few times. He was the police officer in uh, Warrior the Bankrupt. He's just quite a nice clean toad plush, really. And we also got these guys for part six. Hello! Hammer Bro and Boomerang Bro. They're very closely related, as you can see. They're basically the same, <laughs> just different colors. So we wanted to get these so that there were some tougher enemies awaiting Mario at the end of Mario's quest, rather than just Koopas and Goombas and Boo again. We wanted to have someone new to take him on. Woohoo! Yeah! The next episode is Wario the Bankrupt, and we actually have a few plushes that we bought for that. So this guy has appeared a couple of times. Initially he was dressed up as Paracarry for Wario the Bankrupt, but he's also appeared as Paraplonk in Peach's Quest when we gave him a little bucket on his head. He's really soft, this one. <laughs> a little bit smaller than our other Koopas, but he's very cute. Then the others who we got for Warrior the Bankrupt were this huge shy guy here, who is the dentist, and Blooper. And then the Blooper was being fished up, and that's where he lost his tooth. So he put a little mouth on him. Custom made. You see, he's falling apart a little bit. Next is Luigi's Quest, and we have another whole bunch of new plushes. I'm back! First of all, we have Kamek here. Um. This Kamek is pretty awful. I actually regret buying this Kamek. You can see that he's falling apart. It's a hole down the bottom. This wand has fallen off. As you, If you've seen the outtakes to Peach's Quest, you will know that we have been trying to stitch this back on. In fact, it's only held on by a pin right now. He's quite soft, which is one thing he's got going for him. But it's just a lot of things like these glasses, his eyes behind it. They just look really funny for some reason. It looks like you're not meant to see these, but they're there. The wand just being all one colour looks really weird. Yeah, we are we are actually going to get rid of this Kamek plush and replace him, starting from the next time he appears. This toad appears at the start of Luigi's Quest. As I've mentioned already, he was the one from the toad tutorial. Luigi's Quest Part 3 happened almost a year after Part 2, so I remember we wanted to get a few new plushes together to ramp up the excitement for Luigi's Quest again. So at the very start of the Luigi's Quest Part 3 we have a long jump competition which is hosted by this Lucky 2 here. And he does not have the spiny attached to him, the spiny is here, but we took it off so that we could use him as just a Lucky 2 in Peach's Quest Part 3. But the spiny is still here. We actually kept the spiny attached when we used it briefly in Luigi's Quest Part 5 when the Goomba gets powered up with spikes. Also from that long jump competition, we introduced Birdo for the first time. Wow, wow. So Birdo has appeared in Luigi's Quest and in Yoshi and the Lost Egg. It's kind of a nice Birdo plush, this one. Same with Lakitu. Lakitu is nice and soft and Birdo is just a good shape, really. And then we also have this small shy guy. Meow. He couldn't long jump very far at all, unfortunately, but He's made a couple of appearances. He was also the shopkeeper in Peach's Quest Part 1. Although, of course, that was actually Duplass transformed into him. We also introduced Francis in Part 3, and he has his own tutorial as well. One of the more difficult tutorials we've done, just because there's so many little things to him. It's quite funky looking. The mushroom who is made in the mushroom tutorial, this poison shroom here, also gets its first appearance in Luigi's Quest, so he hypnotizes Peach to obeying Bowser. Another one of the Roadport minions who we have is this Buzzy Beetle. In Roadport, the Buzzy Beetle does not have this bow. <laughs> um, it looks a little bit more threatening, I suppose. But this bow was added for Peach's Quest Part 3 because Buzzy Beetle was friends with Toadette and they made cakes together and. La, 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 la. Luigi's Quest Part 4 is the episode that took place at Bo's Mansion, so of course we had to make a custom Lady Bo plush. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the colour of Lady Bo is quite interesting because it's not white felt. What we did is we took white felt and then we dyed it using, I believe it was food colouring. We had to let it out to dry and then sewed the pieces together afterwards, so we got this kind of ghostly look to her that's not quite white. And then there's also Bootler, her faithful butler. He is amazing. Indeed. He was made by my sister. I think this is around the time that my sister started to make more of the custom plushes than I did. And she does such a good job that she does most of them nowadays. Just look at his little moustache and his eyes have just got the perfect expression for him. And look at that, the, the folds on the, the cloth he's holding. <laughs> we're thinking of making a tutorial for these. It's been a few years since we said we were thinking about one. but. Maybe my sister will want to make one when she gets some time. 
Also in part four, we have Duplis. Yeah. As you know, he reappears in Peach's Quest. We made a tutorial for Duplis. We think he looks a little bit like a chicken. I don't know why, it's just something about him. This one was made by my sister. There is one other plush that appears specifically in Luigi's Quest Part 4, and that's uh, this boo. <laughs> you might notice something looks a bit odd about this boo. Why is one arm down and the other arm up? I, I'm so confused by this guy. I presume it was a mistake. It looks like he's doing some sort of weird dance. So we sort of call this guy Stanley just because he's not really a proper boo. He's just got a bit of a weird name. Stanley being a reference to the first Paper Mario. There's a boo called Stanley in that. In part six, Cooper turns into his Cooper shell. My sister sewed this one. It looks very nice. I absolutely love this Cooper shell. But we may make a tutorial for it eventually. And then we have our Dry Bones plush, who is Solace in Luigi's Quest. Wait, what? Yeah, so a lot of you will have noticed that this is not the same dry bones, even though this is how he walks around in Luigi's Quest. Underneath here we have a different dry bones plush. I'm sure you guys are kind of curious to see what's under there. I can't even remember what he looks like, so let's take a look, shall we? Ugh. So, yeah, the reason why we didn't want to use this one was he's not an official one and we just thought this dry bones looked so much better. So we decided to use this one rather than this guy. I think that was a good decision. I haven't even seen this guy's face in so many years. Next up we have Yoshi and the Lost Egg and we introduced this guy as the Yoshi Elder and also the big form of Yoshi for when he gets a super mushroom. Now one of the most interesting things about this is if you see here on the tag, it says 2007. We have had this Yoshi since the very start of Bowser's Mushroom Factory. We just never found a place to use him. So this was his first appearance in Yoshi and the Lost Egg. We also had Blue Yoshi <coughs> acting as the one who owned the Lost Egg. This is the blue one from the Yoshi tutorial. A little bit better looking than the yellow one. Like I improved the nose design. So it doesn't look like a, a duck bill like this one has. And here is the lost egg itself, the blue matching its mother. There was also this egg which appeared in Luigi's Quest, but that was just an attack egg, more of a prop. <laughs> and then we also have <coughs> Baby Birdo. Such a cute little Birdo, this was made by my sister. There's a lot of attention to detail with the, the eyeliner and the bow. A really good job, like especially for something this small, if you want to compare against the size of Birdo even. <laughs> The baby is just so much smaller. I mean, look at it sitting in my hand. I do have quite big hands though. For Mario's transformation, we made this Goomba Mario. Hello! So he's just a, an adaptation of the Goomba template, but giving him a little Mario mustache. And now we have the most recent series at the time of filming this, which is Peach's Quest. We're starting things with this small Bowser plush that my sister sewed. <laughs> this is probably the most complicated plush that she's ever made. We've had a lot of requests to make a Bowser pl uh, plush tutorial, which is something we may consider, but he is so complicated. I mean, these spikes are not a lot of fun to sew together. All those that are around his arms, especially his head, I think most of all. Just trying to get that shape looking right. There's a lot of small pieces involved. She did a very good job of him though. This is the toadette that I mentioned yeah! earlier that we bought, intending to be in Mario's Quest Part 4, but ended up becoming a, a Peach's Quest edition, sweeping the floors. There's our two toadettes. So that means our entire toad collection looks like this. Oops, let's put them down. Custom Toad and Toadette, our original Toad, Big Innkeeper Toad, and the Toadette. She's also got this like sucker thing <laughs> on the top of her, which we've not had to use for anything yet, but could come in handy, you know. <laughs> in part four, we used this bob on plush at last. This was made from the bob on tutorial that I made a few years before Peach's Quest. That was actually one that you guys voted to see, so make sure you keep a lookout for any more voting tutorials that we do. We also had the Elite Trio, 
So this here is Private Goomp. He's very sad, as you can see. Oh, I'm so sad. Uh, my sister made this. She did another amazing job with him. Just getting his expression to look so right and his cute little outfit, his pyjamas, I guess they are, that he wears all the time. She also, for the same episode, made Sergeant Guy, no. the green Shy Guy, and this was what she used as the basis for the Shy Guy tutorial, which is our most recent tutorial as of the, the current time. And now the other one of the Elite Trio is Paraplonk, but actually that's just the same as the Paratrooper plush that we had in Warrior the Bankrupt. That's him here. So what we did was we just put a, a red bucket on his head and strapped it around, <laughs> and then that was how we made our Paraplonk. In part five, we introduced Daisy. Yeah! So here's our lovely Daisy plush. She is amazing. She matches the peach we have very well. Quite similar looking. Hi! Let's party! Very similar material. Kind of similar texture on the, the front here. So it's an official Sané one, which is partly why I recommend everyone to buy Sané plushes if they're looking for Marriott ones. And there can be fake ones out there, so you need to be careful to make sure you get the original ones. We also have this Goomba here. We like to call him Chestnut Goomba. He just looks a little bit different to the others. He's got these thinner eyebrows, but they kind of suit the more modern Goomba look, I guess. If we compare him with our oldest Goomba, there's a certain emphasis on his head. It makes him extra stompable, I suppose. Whereas this one has more of a body. He's also nice and soft. And then we have this Piranha Plant. The Piranha Plant doesn't actually say anything in Peach's Quest. Just sits there in the background of part five to add to the forest atmosphere. And we also have this Mahusive bob um, Let me try and actually get all of her in the shot. Uh, yeah, we've added these funny lips onto her. Because <laughs> she was the, the mother of the bob -ombs. Let me just remove those. So that's what this, this bob -omb looks like. We've had this for quite a few years and just never used it. We, we were intending to use it originally in Mario's Quest. They didn't find a good place for it. Now we're on to the bad guys. We have Mimi here. Well, who hi there. We have a tutorial for, of course. We gave her this hat. Well, my sister made this hat for her at the end, although I made the rest of the Mimi. And we just sort of keep that hat on her now. It's her, her post game phase. It looks really quite cute on her. A lot of her design is based off the way she looks in Super Paper Mario and all those outfits that you can see in Peach's Quest on the wall. They're also based off Super Paper Mario all the outfits that, Peach, uh, that Mimi can wear. Then we have this monstrosity. <laughs> you might notice that there's a massive hole in this. Now that is because when we make Spider Mimi, our actual Mimi plush goes inside here and Mimi's body hangs out. I'm thinking of making a separate video about the way we did the animation for the Spider Mimi transformation. If you think that would be a good idea, let me know. And then we have Triplus, the big bad of Peach's Quest. <laughs> he was made using the Duplus tutorial. I made this one, whereas my sister made the original Duplus. I think she did a better job than I did. And that means including the custom plushes. Our Goomba collection is actually quite big. So these are the only two that are store-bought out of all our Goombas. And then we've got a bunch of custom ones. So there's one that was made for Bowser's Mushroom Factory and Goom Free made in the tutorial and used in Mario's Quest Goomba Mario Boing. for Mario's transformation and Private Goom Look at them all I'm so proud of my Goombas And although he's not been in a video yet here's the Shy Bandit that my sister made in the Shy Guy tutorial Look at his lovely little straw made of pipe cleaners yeah, he matches the, the green one quite well, I think. And that's now everything up to the present day. I'll give you a quick sneak peek there, because you've probably seen this fella in some of our photos that we've been doing as a preview to Bowser's Mushroom Factory 2. So this is the Mega Mushroom. He is a lot bigger than our other mushroom. There you can see a size comparison. But that's quite suitable since this one makes you Absolutely huge. My sister made this again. Good job with the, the cheeks with the eyes to make them look extra happy and chubby. And now you might wonder what? Who's this? Well, yeah, this is this is a potential replacement for our warrior. What? 
you're in pasta. No, you're in pasta. What? No. Yeah, so we're considering replacing this warrior flush with this one. He's a bit smaller, but he kind of fits in line with the others a bit better. There is something about the way this warrior's eyes are crossed that even though he's a bit weird looking, it kind of suits him in a way, the character. But he is huge and really clunky. So if you'd like to see us swap out our warrior plush for this new one, no, don't do it. Yes, do it. Then uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about Wario. And finally, this here is our replacement for Kamek, who is actually going to be used. We, we've already made that decision. There will be no more of that old Kamek. Let me know if you would like to see a video showing off all our customizations we have for our plushes, such as the way we turn Cooper into Colorado. Oh, hello there, good sirs. Don't you want to see how I'm made? Oh, I mean, uh, I'm just Cooper. Ah.